two months for NHS treatment. That's according to new research from the Royal College of Psychiatrists. It's warning that the extra stress of COVID-19 could worsen that wait time. Saturday is World Mental Health Day, an annual occasion to think about your well-being and that of others. We know that COVID-19 is damaging the mental health of people in knots and beyond, so events like these may be more important than ever before. Here to discuss this is psychotherapist Lena Mukherjee, who's on the line now. Hello, Lena. Thank you so much for joining us today. And lovely to see you, Clary. Now, we've been having Hiya. updates throughout the pandemic when we've been in lockdown, the new normal, and now it's looking like more restrictions might come too. What's the impact that it might be having on our mental health? Well, as Andy was saying, it's it's going to require us to, to really acknowledge what our mental health and state of being is, Chloe. So it's about having a reality check of living with further limitations, but also recognising the resources that have been accessed during these past few months. We're not talking weeks anymore, because, you know, you and I have been conversing over the months, talking about resilience. So it's about calling on your own resources and know, actually, this is going to be long haul and accepting that's the case. And what are some things that we can do? I mean, as you say, it, we are kind of in it for the long haul now. What can we do to sustain ourselves and to make it a more of a lifestyle change? Uh, you've said it, absolutely. So do you remember we talked about accommodative and assimilative learning before? Mm -hmm. And it's, it literally is a, a state of change and, and recognising our old ways of being are no longer accessible. So like Andy was saying, that accessing services of help it's not shameful. It's not embarrassing. It doesn't show you're a weak, you're a failure or a weakness in any way. But get help if you really feel. Also, checking in with more of your friends and, and social contacts and making the effort. I've certainly found that being a carer to Richard, it's, it's very easy to close down. Um, but actually having to be disciplined to say, you know what, I need a conversation can make the difference. Yeah. And you would have seen firsthand the impact, you know, the pandemic has had on people. Can you give some examples of how people have been feeling. I certainly can, Chloe. Two clients I'm, I'm going to, to bring in, and they've, they've given me permission, but I'm not going to obviously name them. Um, one was working from home, four children living next door who were screaming their heads off because they weren't going to school from five in the morning to ten at night. I think the parents couldn't cope. So the person I was working with was, was told to work from home when she'd been used to working at work, and she rang me in a state of absolute despair. It, it was really, really frightening for her because she's a strong lady, a very, a very senior manager, and um, was, thought she was going to go insane. Anyway, we worked it through, talked it through on the phone, and it's amazing how she got her power back to realise, oh, my God, I switched back on. I didn't realise I'd switched out. And she was able to negotiate uh, a way forward with her manager to be able to get into work once a week. And it made the difference to feel she had got her power back, and that was huge. Likewise, with another um, client working in the health industry who thought she was going to have to resign. It was so bad the way she was treated and she, until she realised, hang on a minute, uh, where's my power gone? I think I've been really badly treated, and she had been. So we worked with HR, worked with her rights, and she negotiated herself a really good deal back to work. And in fact, she got a better job. <laughs> so actually, it worked out. Just by having three, four counselling sessions made the difference. They knew what they needed. They lost their way. It's amazing. Well, World Mental Health Day is on Saturday, but there's also another awareness day coming up as well, and that's Menopause Day, and you're yes, involved with that, aren't you? I am indeed, Chloe. It was fantastic. I, I love it. And so I love that your show, because you, you really mark this and take it seriously. And next, well, for this whole month... Um, I am a real advocate and, and campaigner for, for raising the awareness of menopause. And last week I was involved with Emo and the Menopause Archive, the diaries that that project's involved in. So I was presented there, fantastic. And next week I'm going to be presenting at Sellafield. I, used, I worked there 30 years ago, Chloe, and I'm going back to present as part of a World Menopause event um, that the whole organisation are offering. It, it's world-breaking, actually, because they've recognised that the 50-plus-year-old female workforce are really vital to retain them because they're very experienced mm. um, and they're valued. So I'm involved with that day, talking about grief and loss and how management can support their workforce through a process of, of intense change. And then later on in the month, I'm going to be um, presenting a, a show in Mexico. Would you believe it? So I'm going to be interviewed about my work. It's fantastic. That's the wonders of social media, how people find you. Um, so I'm going to be talking about my work 
with my book and, and how I work with clients, female clients going through menopause and change and to market that it's a fantastic opportunity. Brilliant. There's lots to get involved with there. You have to let there us know is. how it goes. Thank you very I much, know. Lena. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Let's remind you 